I'll start. I'll let, I'll let the prosecution start with introduction, and then we'll get an introduction from the defense. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Hunter Wright, counsel for the government. I'm joined today by my second chair, Cara Catelier. Nice to meet you. Defense? Good morning, Your Honor. Marquise Nixon on behalf of the defendant, Cara Bassett, alongside my second chair, Grace Strode, Your Honor. Okay. Do we have any pretrial issues we need to take up, motions, housekeeping, anything like that? Yes, Your Honor, we do. Okay. Go ahead. I'll let, the, uh, I'll let the government start, and then uh, defense, if you have anything to add, we'll toss it at the end, all right? Oh, Your Honor, first, we would like to invoke Rule 615, which constructively sequesters all witnesses in trial today. Any objection to that? None from the defense, Your Honor. Then it shall, shall be done. We'd like to remind the court of Stipulation 7, which says that Exhibits 4 through 33 are already in evidence That's and can be point. used at any time by either counsel. Is that correct, defense? Yes, Your Honor. It's noted. We'd also like to remind the court of Stipulation 9, which says that uh, witnesses need not identify the defendant in today's case. Okay. And for the convenience of the court, we would ask that witnesses be pre-sworn in. Any objection to pre-swearing the witnesses? None, Your Honor. Okay. They are all they are all sworn to tell the truth. Yes, Your Honor. With that, the people are ready to proceed. Any other housekeeping from the defense? No housekeeping from the defense, Your Honor. The defense is ready to proceed. Any any other matters we need to handle from either side before opening? Your Honor, before proceeding with opening, I'd ask for a moment to rearrange. Certainly. And if, if that's all we need, then you're ready to start your opening as soon as you're positioned. May I proceed? Yes. She had a dream she was willing to kill for. It's August 19th, 2017. The defendant steps out of a white Chevy Express van. She can smell the exhaust coming from the van, the methane and sulfur coming from the swamp. As she unloads the body of her husband into a wheelchair, she thinks about all the times that she was underestimated, all the times he made promises he didn't keep. And she wheels him down to a pool of water she thinks is just deep enough for his body. She tosses in his phone, his wallet, and a carfentanil syringe she had just used on her husband. And then she runs back to her van as quickly as she can. Before she gets in, she stops. And she thinks to herself, and she smiles. She's done waiting for Don Clark to make her dreams come true. Members of the jury, my name is Hunter Wright and I represent the government today's case. As the government, we've charged the defendant with the murder of her husband, Don Clark. That means we have to show beyond a reasonable doubt that Kara Bassett killed Don Clark unlawfully and with malice aforethought. All that means is that when she killed Don Clark, she meant to kill him. In order to meet that burden, we're going to call a witness named Special Agent Steph Br Steph Branham. Agent Branham's going to tell you all about the defendant's motive, a park owned by her husband, Don Clark. You'll hear Don Clark ran that park like it was a zoo. Cages, animal rides, any type of animal exploit he could get his hands on, he would. You're going to hear that Carabasset wanted more than just a zoo. She wanted a sanctuary. But whenever she'd come about this with her husband, she was met with the response, this is a park. As long as it's my money, it's going to be run that way. Members of the jury, you're also going to hear from Agent Branham about evidence in today's case that shows how she did it. You'll hear about algae that was found on the driver's side of Don Clark's van. Algae that matches the underside of Kara Bassett's boots. Algae that matches the underside of a wheelchair. And that matches Big Gum Swamp, 139 miles east of the Elephant Park. 
We'll show you GPS records that prove that that van went to, G to Big Gum Swamp on the same day Don Clark disappeared. While you listen to the evidence in today's case, I want you to pay attention to what the defendant did after Don Clark disappeared. Nothing. No phone calls, no text messages. She didn't even report him missing for an entire week. But after a month, she took all of his assets and turned the park into a sanctuary. At the end of today's trial, we're gonna ask for a verdict of guilty. She had a dream she was willing to kill for. Thank you. That's. Yes, Your Honor, one second to readjust. No worries, take your time. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Members of the jury, today the prosecution will try to tell you a story. And in this story, they're gonna focus on trying to turn a mother into a murderer and a passion into a motive. But members of the jury, you're gonna to have to ask yourself five questions today. Who, what, when, where, and why? Now today, my co-counsel Grace Strode and I represent the defendant Carabaset. The defendant is being caught in a fishing expedition by the US government today in which they've decided to charge her for the murder of her husband, Don Clark. Now the prosecution, they hold the burden of proof. They have to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt, the highest burden in our court today, that she killed Don Clark. They have to prove to you, one, that she not only did she kill him, but two, did she kill him with malice of forethought. But in order for them to do this today, they're gonna to try to tell you a story. And members of the jury, a story is not enough. You will have to ask yourself those five questions I told you earlier. You have to ask, who killed Don Clark? You have to ask yourself, where is Don Clark's body? You have to ask yourself, what evidence is there to prove to kill, that they killed Don Clark? You have to ask, when was Don Clark killed? And you have to ask, why did Don Clark disappear? And members of the jury, at the end of this trial, if you're left still wondering, still trying to find the answer for one of those questions, Prosecution has not met their burden of proof. Now the prosecution is gonna call forth to you today, Special Agent Stephen Brennan. They will try to paint you this picture that there was a tranquilizer that they used, that my client used to kill her husband. However, you have to ask yourself that, what evidence that approved that? You hear today that they don't have that tranquilizer in court. You'll hear today they don't have that body to do an autopsy on. You'll hear today that they have no physical evidence. Stephen Brandon will try to tell you about algae samples, but you'll hear today that they don't know when that algae sample got there. And then we'll bring forth to you Joe Young, the television producer of the show Elephant Queen. Joe Young will show you today that that passion they're trying to turn into a motive is merely just a love for elephants. Caribou said wouldn't harm a human being to get to elephants. There's no sufficient evidence to prove that today. You will hear from Joe Young. You will not be able to ask and answer all five questions at the end of this trial. Prosecution won't tell you who killed Don Clark. You'll hear about multiple different people. They won't be able to tell you where his body is. You'll hear about multiple different whereabouts. They won't be able to tell you when because it's on or about August 17th. 2018. They can't tell you why she did it because once again, they're, they're trying to tell you it was her love for these elephants. And members of the jury, we will come back up here after the end of this trial and ask you to find in favor of my client. Don't look at that mother's passion for a motive. Look at it simply for a passion. And look at the evidence there won't be today and find her not guilty. Thank you. Thank you. Our government, call your first witness.
Yes, Your Honor. The government calls Agent Stephan Branham to the stand. Okay. Agent, you're, you're already sworn, so you may proceed. Apologies, Your Honor. I'm rearranging the screen. No worries. Take your time. Good afternoon, Agent Branham. Good afternoon, sir. I want to talk about uh, your qualifications in today's case. Can you introduce yourself to the members of the jury? Yes, sir. I am currently a senior special agent for the FBI. What kind of training do you have? I received 800 hours of training at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, and I've received annual training since. All right. Well, how are you involved in our case today? Sir, I was the lead investigator in the disappearance of Don Clark. All right. How did your investigation begin? Well, first we went to the local Cary Bell Leon Airport. What did you find when you arrived at the airport? Well, we found that there was a missing park van that appeared to be at the airport. What else did you find? Don Clark's airplane was found in the hangar at the airport. Now you mentioned you found a van. Was there anything of significance in that van? Yes, sir. We did notice that the van had some GPS history, and we analyzed that history. Your Honor, Ms. Catelier, can you please bring up Exhibit 31 for us, please? Agent Branham, do you recognize this exhibit? Yes, sir. This appears to be the park van's GPS history from August 18th, 2017. Now, what did this history help you with in your investigation today? Well, sir, it showed us on August 18th the whereabouts of that park van. Now, you mentioned that you had found algae in the driver's side of Don Clark's van. Uh, why was that significant? Well, we compared the samples that we found in the park van to algae at Big Gum Swamp, where the GPS history showed the van went to that night. It was discovered that the two samples were a match. Did you uh, find proper opinion? Hold on. Uh, okay, we have an objection to an improper opinion. Can you expand on that for the objection? Your Honor, being that this witness isn't an expert, she cannot testify to whether or not algae samples match from one place or another. There has been no methodology or method it's established to testify to her knowledge towards that, Your Honor. Therefore, by her soliciting this pursuant to Rule 702, she doesn't have sufficient enough expertise to testify on that match, Your Honor. Maybe heard, Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, Agent Branham is basing uh, this conclusion in her investigation on an uh, anal analysis report uh, that was provided to her by her FBI uh, anal analysis team. Now, this is an exhibit that we already have in evidence today. It's been admitted. It is the is that information on an exhibit that's part of that um, housekeeping we covered of exhibit, I forget, 4031, 4039, whatever it was? Yes, Your Honor, stipulation seven. Okay, is that correct, Mr. Uh, Defense Attorney? Uh, Your Honor, this report was written by a Jules Greaves, the person who conducted this forensics investigation. So they want to bring up the information on the report being a match, they can do that. But this witness alone does not have sufficient enough knowledge to testify to whether or not they're a match because she's not an expert in today's case, Your Honor. I see what you're saying. Your, your, yeah, concern yeah. Is, your concern is the witness saying, giving her opinion it's a match versus saying, I reviewed a report that stated it was a match. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. I do, I do tend to agree with that. So I'm going to sustain that objection. But certainly, if you um, rephrase that question to limit it to the evidence, you'll be able to ask that question. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Agent Branham, you had mentioned the algae. Were you able to find any information about that algae while conducting your investigation? Yes, sir. Our forensics lab compared the algae samples found in the floor inside of the driver's area of the van to algae from Big Gum Swamp, and our forensics lab discovered that the samples were a match. Now, were you able to find any other traces of that algae in your investigation? Yes, sir. We obtained samples from uh, the bottom side of a wheelchair at the Elephant Park and on Miss Bassett's boots. Once again, our lab compared the samples to the algae from Big Gum Swamp, and it was discovered they were a match. Were you able to find any other physical evidence of importance to you in today's case? Yes, sir. Can you give us an example? 
Uh, sir, I'm confused as to what you're referring to. Well, Agent Branham, when you were investigating the park, uh, did you find any evidence of a potential murder weapon? Yes, sir. We did find in the storage facility of that elephant park that there was a supply of elephant tranquilizer syringes, and one of them was missing. Ms. Cotelier, can you bring up Exhibit eight or 17 for us, please? Agent Branham, why was it important that a syringe was missing from the elephant park? Well, based on this data sheet that we did find out the park, I uh, think on section 2.5 specifically, it says that if the uh, syringe made of carfentanil is injected or swallowed into a human with just one milligram, it's fatal. Now, a moment ago, you'd mentioned that when you were at the airport, you had seen Don Clark's airplane still in its hangar. Why was that significant? Well, sir, I was led to believe that because the airplane was still in the hangar that uh, Don Clark did not use that airplane to go to Costa Rica. What was the next in step, uh, what was the next step in your investigation? Well, I analyzed uh, the communications between uh, Don Clark and Kara Bassett and their relationship. What were you able to uh, conclude about uh, the types of argument or conversations that they would have? Well, I did learn that uh, the defendant and her husband had appeared to be arguing quite a bit. Were you able to find out what they were arguing about? Yes, sir. Uh, the Elephant Park specifically, it appeared that Ms. Bassett wanted to transform that park into a sanctuary. Now, were you able to find any evidence to suggest that their arguments ever turned physical? Yes, sir. I believe in June of 2017, Mr. Don Clark fired, filed a request for a restraining order. Agent Brandom, do you have your exhibit handbook in front of you? Yes, sir. Can you turn to exhibit 34 for me, please? Yes, sir. I have it pulled up. Agent, do you recognize this exhibit? I do. What is it? This appears to be the request for the restraining order filed by Don Clark. Is that a fair and accurate representation of the restraining order that you saw in your investigation in today's case? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time, we move Exhibit 34 into evidence. Any objection to Exhibit 34? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, I have three. Um, I have more prejudice and probative, according to Rule 403. I have improper character evidence pursuant to Rule 404A. And I have hearsay within hearsay pursuant to Rule 805, Your Honor. Okay. Um, May I be heard, Your Honor? Sure. Can you put it on the screen? I want to look at it while we're talking about it. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Constructively outside the purview of the jury. Perfect. Perfect. The, jurors, the jurors will not see it or remember. No, Your Honor, first, as to the uh, hearsay argument that opposing counsel is making, uh, we're not offering this for its truth, but rather uh, the state of mind that it had on Don Clark, uh, that it shows that he was afraid. That's his mental state in making this document. He was afraid of his wife, Kara Bassett. As to the character argument opposing counsel made, this directly goes towards the intent that uh, Kara Bassett would have to murder her husband, Don Clark. This shows that on a, an occasion she had actually attacked Don Clark. Uh, and to the more prejudicial than probative argument, this document doesn't show that uh, that uh, Don Clark, or this document's not going to inflame the passions of the jury, Your Honor, uh, but rather the probative value we'll get from this document, it's not substantially outweighed by any pre prejudicial effect it might have. It shows that Don Clark was afraid because he may have been attacked by Kara Bassett. Response, Your Honor. Yes, go ahead. So starting with the 403, Your Honor, this injunction was denied by Judge Your Honor. By showing this denied injunction to a jury, Your Honor, would heavily become uh, more prejudicial and probative, Your Honor, on the fact that they're saying a document that, that the court has already found uh, uh, not relevant or denied, Your Honor. And that's the rule 404, Your Honor. By saying they're showing her intent to kill, which is what they're trying her on today, pursuant to rule 404A prohibits to use Your Honor, you cannot use past actions to prove conformity therewith on the day in, uh, in question, Your Honor. And as to the hearsay, they are, are using this for the truth of the matter asserted, as he said, so that these statements your Honor, are the reason why they believe Kara Bassett was violent towards her husband. Okay. 
the you're seeking to enter the entire document, correct, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You want to do you want to give a final response to that argument? Uh, Your Honor, I stand with my argument. However, I would like to point out that we aren't offering the statements to show uh, that Kara Bassett, that there was those statements that Kara Bassett uh, would want to hurt Don Clark for, but rather that those statements show that Don Clark was afraid of Kara Bassett. I, I did. I guess I want to ask you, if you're not offering it for the truth, but you're also offering it for an exception of intent, wouldn't the intent exception be for its truth? In other words, that when she says, make statements of intent, those are being offered for their truth. In other words, can you have it both ways? That it's, the hearsay is not being offered for its truth, but it's also an exception to character that it goes to intent. Wouldn't those contradict each other? Your Honor, it's the defense's content, or sorry, it's the government's contention that they wouldn't contradict one another, uh, but rather that the uh, hearsay statement would allow this to be uh, admissible due to the state of mind, in addition to the intent being admissible as it goes towards uh, the ultimate issue in today's case. Um, okay, I'm going to overrule the objection. Um, I'm going to give, I'll give a uh, constructive curative instruction to the jury as to what an injunction is or a protective order is and that they're to uh, use this only as part of their general deliberation on this case. And you can certainly yes, cross-examine on that yes, uh, when the time comes. So that Exhibit 34 will be admitted over the defense objection and you may proceed. Yes, yes sir. Uh, Agent Brandon, can you take a look at Exhibit 34 for me, please? Agent Brandon, are you with us? Yes, sir. Are you taking a look at Exhibit 34? Yes, sir, I am. Do you, do you see the handwritten statement by Don Clark on that exhibit? I do. Can you read that out for the members of the jury? Yes, sir. This is the second time Kara has gotten angry enough to threaten to kill me. Let me run the park my way or I'm going to kill you. She told me to leave my own property. I own that property. I can't defend myself because she took my 357 revolver and hit it. I'm afraid she's going to kill me in my sleep. Uh, Agent, when was this restraining order filed? Well, sir, it appears to have been filed in June of 2017. Now, I want to talk to you about, I want to go further into your investigation at the park. Now, while you were at the park, well, where'd your investigation go from there? Well, we did come upon a power of attorney that Mr. Clark had filed to Ms. Bassett. Ms. Catelier, can you bring up Exhibit 15 for us, please? Agent Branham, do you recognize Exhibit 15? Yes, sir, I do. This appears to be the power of attorney. What were you able to learn from that power of attorney document? Well, I learned that uh, in this document, Don Clark had signed over uh, his assets totaling to $8 million in the event of his incapacitation or disappearance. Thank you. Now, Agent Branham, from there, where did your investigation go? Well, sir, um, finally, uh, we analyzed the communications between Don Clark and Carabasi. Uh, Ms. Catelier, can you bring up Exhibit 22 for us? Do you, rec do you recognize Exhibit 22? Yes, sir. These are Ms. Bassett's phone records. Now, what time span do these phone records cover? It appears to cover the uh, week of August 18th through August 25th of the year 2017. Now, during that week, how many text messages did the defendant send? Quite a few, sir. Well, how many of those text messages were to Don Clark? Uh, none of them after August 18th. How many phone calls did the defendant make? Looks like five, sir. How many of those were to Don Clark? None of them, sir. Out of all of the text messages, how many of those even mentioned Don Clark? I don't see any, sir. Thank you, Agent Brandon. Your Honor, I have no further questions at this time. All right. Cross-exam? Uh, yes, Your Honor. 
May I proceed? You may. Good afternoon, Ms. Brandon. I'd like to talk a bit about your investigation here. You're an FBI agent, that's correct? That's correct, sir. And you conducted an investigation in today's case? I was the lead investigator. And you conducted a thorough investigation, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Well, let's talk a bit about how unthorough your investigation was. You investigated one person being care beset, isn't that right? We did interview many people, sir, but we did uh, conclude that Kara Bassett was the lead suspect. Right, and I'd like to talk about these other pe people here. You never got the chance to question Lisa Clark, isn't that right? We did not, sir. You were aware that Lisa Clark had previously threatened Don Clark, isn't that right? That is what we learned, sir. Back when you went to question Lisa Clark, she even said that, that he deserves to die. Isn't that right? She did, sir. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Response, Your Honor. Go ahead. I'm not offering this statement for the truth of the matter, Sergeant Your Honor, that he did deserve to die, but only for the fact that he did not play a portion in this witness's investigation. Overall. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. And she said he deserves to die. Isn't that right? That is what she said, sir. And you even got a letter from an attorney that said that she had threatened Dawn in the past. Isn't that right? That is what Mr. Clark's attorney had said in his letter. However, you never investigated or got the chance to question Ms. Clark, correct? Once again, sir, we did not. I'd also like to focus on who else you might not have investigated here. Ms. Drug, may you display exhibit four? Now, I'd like to focus here solely on page two, the last sentence there. It mentions that the reason Carabaset included this disappearance was because of those men. I read that correctly? That is what the letter says, sir referring to those men in Costa Rica, isn't that right? That is what the letter says, sir. Now, you never investigated anyone in Costa Rica, correct? We did speak with officials in Costa Rica, and they found no evidence of Don Clark. Right, but you didn't go to Costa Rica yourself to conduct an investigation, isn't that right? We did not. We spoke with the Costa Rican officials. And I'd like to show you here Exhibit 21, Don Clark's phone records. Now, on page two here, these are text messages that Don Clark received, isn't that right? That's correct, sir. And two of these came from Costa Rica, isn't that right? That is what the records say, sir. One that says, call me, and another says immediately, isn't that right? That's true. And on the first page here, it shows that Don Clark had a call for 52 minutes to someone from Costa Rica, isn't that right? Yes, sir. However, you still didn't go to Costa Rica yourself to investigate this, correct? Once again, sir, we did speak with the Costa Rican officials, and they had found no evidence of Don Clark. But you didn't go yourself, isn't that right? We did not need to, sir. I'd like to focus on what evidence you have to prove Kara Bassett murdered her husband today. You believe it was a tranquilizer she used to kill her husband, isn't that right? That's correct, sir. However, there is no tranquilizer in court today, isn't that right? It was a missing tranquilizer. And you mentioned that people had access to these tranquilizers, isn't that right? That's true. In fact, in that same logbook, there was at least three people that had access to these tranquilizers, isn't that right? That's correct, sir. And I'd like to bring up that MSD report you mentioned earlier, Exhibit uh, 17. Here at 3.2, it says one of the symptoms of it is vomiting, correct? That does appear, appear to be one of the many important symptoms and effects. Now, when you investigated the park, you found no vomit, isn't that right? We did not find vomit throughout our entire investigation, sir. You didn't find vomit at the swamp, correct? No, sir. No vomit in that van, isn't that right? We did not, sir. And I'd like to focus now on your uh, algae evidence here. Let's talk about Exhibit 5. In this re forensics report, it only said that it was highly likely that the algae matched, isn't that right? That's correct, highly likely. But it even says here, and I can tell, can you see the exhibit five? Uh, no, sir, I cannot, but I can pull it up on my screen. Um, I lost permission to share documents your honor one second please let me retry okay. 
that. I'm so I don't think I control that. So if uh, Your Honor, we ask that during this time, uh, time be paused for both sure. second chairs to be able to resolve this issue. Sure, certainly. Um, Spencer, I know you're a co-host on it. Is there? Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. That's it. All right. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. You no problem. Now, focusing on the the algae here, if you can scroll down a bit to the third location. It says you found the algae on the underside of a wheelchair, isn't that right? Yes, sir, and on Ms. Bassett's boots. Now, help me understand something here. If someone were to push a wheelchair into a swamp full of algae, don't you think that algae would be on the wheels? Sir, I cannot say for sure. It would depend on the angle in which the wheelchair went into the swamp. But there was no algae on the wheel in this case, correct? Sir, it was on the underside of the wheelchair. Right, and focusing on page two here. It says there was no way to determine when that algae got there. Isn't that right? No, sir. We cannot uh, find out what time the algae got on uh, the wheelchair and on Miss Bassett's boots. And there was no algae found on Miss Bassett's clothes, correct? Just on her boots, sir. And I like to move on now to Don Clark's whereabouts. You don't have a body. Isn't that right? We were unable to retrieve Don Clark's body. And you're aware in this letter from Mandy that it mentioned he had an off-the-book account, isn't that right? According to Mr. Clark's attorney, that is correct. And, this, and you never investigated whether or not Don took this off-book money and went to Costa Rica, correct? Sir, I want to be clear. Like I said, we spoke with the Costa Rican officials, and they found no evidence of Don Clark. Let me redirect you back to my question. You never looked into whether or not there was a possibility that Don Clark left with this off the book money, correct? No, sir. But you don't know where Don is, isn't that right? We were unable to retrieve his body, sir. And you don't know when exactly Don Clark was killed, isn't that right? We were unable to retrieve Don Clark's body, so as a result, we can't uh, conduct an autopsy. Right, because you couldn't conduct an autopsy either, isn't that right? That's true, sir. I pass this with you, Your Honor. All right, any redirect? Uh, I ask how much remaining time I have before proceeding. Sure. It may appear as a private message to myself. I'll oh. tell you when I'm advised. Uh, yes, Your Honor, may I proceed? You may. Agent Branham, why didn't you go to Costa Rica to investigate? Well, like I was trying to say, uh, we communicated with the officials in Costa Rica, the law enforcement, and uh, after doing a search, they told us they found no evidence of Don Clark being in Costa Rica. Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Okay. May this witness please be, ex or if, uh, barring no recross, may this witness be excused? All right. Without recross, this witness is excused. Uh, prosecution, you can call your second witness. The prosecute. I'm sorry, no. Your Honor. The government has no further wet witnesses. We rest at this time. Okay. Any any mid trial matters we can take up, or are we ready to start with the second part of the case? Defense is we're ready to proceed. Okay. Assuming any motions were made, they've been denied. You can call your first witness, defense. At this time, Your Honor, the defense calls Joe Young to the stand. Okay. Mr. Young or Miss Young is sworn, and you may proceed. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Why don't you introduce yourself to the court? Well, good afternoon. My name is Joe Young. And tell me a bit about yourself, Ms. Young. Sure. Uh, I'm a filmmaker. I'm new to the field. I just graduated from college a few years ago, and I'm still trying to find my footing in the industry. Well, what led you to be a filmmaker? Well, I grew up in a very small town in Maine, and there wasn't much to do there, so I was always behind the camera just trying to pass time. I eventually decided I wanted to go into filmmaking. And, you know, people always said, go west, go to Hollywood, meet all the celebrities, there's opportunities falling from the sky. But I ended up in Florida. Now, what kind of TV shows do you produce, Miss Young? Reality TV and some documentaries, mostly. And are you working on any TV shows currently? I am. I'm, I'm filming a documentary of Kara Bassett. Uh, she gave me a call back in 2015, asked if I'd be willing to film a documentary of her and her elephants and their journey. I was flattered and said yes. And how long have you been working on this documentary for Miss Bassett? Three years now. 
And during your time of working on this documentary, did you get to know the park employees pretty well? I did. Um, I was at the park every day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. filming, uh, conducting interviews, getting B-roll. I got to know everyone pretty well. And were you being paid to create this documentary? I am. Uh, it's actually my first paid job out of college. And would you say that you being paid will hinder your testimony in any way today? No, of course not. I'd like to talk to move on here a bit about some people you might know. Uh, Ms. Strug, could you display Exhibit 7 to the jury? Do you know who this is, Ms. Young? Yes, uh, that is Kara Bassett. Well, well, can you tell me about Ms. Bassett? Um, Kara and I, we got to know each other pretty well. She's very kind, uh, passionate, smart. And how long have you known Ms. Bassett? Uh, since I started filming my documentary in 2015. Now, in the time that you've known Ms. Bassett, have you ever known her to be violent? No, of course not. Kara was very loving and kind. I'd like to move on here to someone else you might know. Maybe this place would be six to the jury. Now, can you tell me who this is, Ms. Young? Sure. Uh, this is Don Clark, Kara's husband. And what can you tell me about Mr. Clark? Don was a little bit more serious. Uh, he was very focused on the business, workings of the Elephant Park. And during your time at the park, did you get to get film on Don as well? I did. Uh, Don and I, we closely interacted. He was at the park at the same time as I was. Now I'd like to move on and be here and talk about Don Clark and Kara Bissett. What did you know about their relationship? Um, well, I was able to witness it for years. Uh, from what I could see, they seemed very caring, loving, uh, affectionate. Now, did they ever disagree on anything? Sure. Uh, sometimes they disagreed about uh, the elephant park, uh, but for the most part, they seemed to be in a quite loving relationship. And did these disagreements ever escalate, Miss Young? Uh, once, maybe. Uh, in the summer of 2017, uh, there was this one time they were they were arguing uh, about the elephant park and Kara she threw a vase at Don don't worry it missed Don hit a wall next to him uh, but that's honestly the only time and did you know Kara to be the type of person to attack Mr. Clark no now, I'd like to move on here to the day in question where were you on August 18th of 2017 I was at the Elephant Park. Um, I actually had filmed some clips of Kara and the elephants that morning, so I was spending a lot of time with her. And how would you say Kara Bassett was that day? Normal, I guess. Uh, she seemed like the Kara I knew. Did you ever get to interact with Mr. Clark on the 18th? Yeah, um, I did. I was heading out at 6 p.m., had this beautiful trip to Mexico planned, and I bumped into Dawn on my way out. And what happened in this altercation with Mr. Clark? Well, uh, we were talking about my trip. And then at some point, he looked at his phone. Uh, kind of seemed like he got scared, and he rushed away and just left me standing there. Now, I'd like to bring something to your attention here. Ms. Drug, can you display Exhibit 21 again? Now, after you had that conversation with uh, Don Clark, can you see who he called there at 6 p.m.? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, according to this document, uh, Don Clark called a Costa Rican number at 6 p.m. Now, what do you know about Don Clark in Costa Rica? Um, well, I knew that Don frequently traveled to Costa Rica. Uh, he had a vacation home there. And did you ever try to visit Costa Rica yourself? I did, uh, after Mr. Clark disappeared. Um, I went to Costa Rica to investigate, to see if I could find him. Honestly, I thought it'd make a good episode for my documentary that I was filming. Were you ever able to find Mr. Clark? No. Uh, when I went in the summer of 2018, I wasn't able to find Don. And have you seen Don Clark ever since he disappeared on August 18, 2017? No. Unfortunately, I, I haven't seen or spoken to him since then. And do you know where Don Clark is? 
No, I don't. Thank you, Ms. Young. I'll pass this witness, Your Honor. Cross exam? Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? You may. Good afternoon, Ms. Young. Good afternoon. As you were telling Mr. Nickerson a moment ago, back in 2015, you started working at the Greater Tallahassee Elephant Park, right? I did, uh, filming a documentary. All right, and you had a chance uh, to become familiar with the syringes that they would use as elephant tranquilizers at the park. True? Sure. Um, I saw them use the elephant tranquilizers a few times. Ms. Cotelier, can you bring up Exhibit 18 for us? Now, Ms. Young, you recognize this, right? Yes, uh, this is one of those elephant tranquilizer syringes. And you heard the defendant tell her staff she needed to they needed to make sure they took meticulous care of these syringes or they could get into trouble, right? That's true. I want to talk about the defendant's dreams. She told you she had a dream of making the park into a sanctuary, correct? That's true. Uh, she was very passionate about protecting the elephants. She said that that sanctuary was going to be the largest elephant sanctuary in the world. Correct? Yes, uh, that was her hope. But her husband, Don Clark, never made it a sanctuary, did he? Uh, no, he didn't. Ms. Cotelier, can you bring up Exhibit 8 for us? Ms. Young, Don Clark ran the park like a zoo. Do I have that right? Uh, that's one way of putting it, sure. Well, you would keep the elephants in cages, correct? He would, uh, during the daytime. And he fought with his wife, Don Clark, about this for years, or with his wife, Kara Bassett, for years, correct? Uh, here and there, they disagreed about the elephant park. Right, they'd have arguments. Sometimes. You had a chance to see those arguments firsthand. Do I have that right? Um, well, I was filming the documentary for three years, so sure. Well, you say you were filming the documentary, but you never got any footage of their arguments, did you? No, I didn't. And that's because the defendant would make you delete that footage, right? Yeah, sometimes Kara would ask me to and I'd respect her wishes. It made sense. Now, in around August, you told opposing counsel that you had seen an altercation between Don Clark and Kara Bassett, correct? Yes, I, I did. And you said that uh, they, they had been arguing about making the park into a sanctuary, true? Yeah, if I can remember correctly, it was a long time ago. Uh, that was what they were arguing about. And the defendant got so angry at her husband, she threw a vase at him, right? Yeah, uh, she threw a vase, but it, it didn't hit him. And honestly, that was the only time I witnessed something like that. Thank you, Agent. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Any uh, redirect? Uh, no, Your Honor. May my witness step down. Witness may be excused. Any other witnesses for the defense? Uh, no, Your Honor. The defense rests case in chief. Okay. Any other matters we need to take up before closing arguments? None from the defense, Your Honor. No, no Your Honor. Is the, uh, is the prosecution ready for closing then? Well, we would ask for a moment to rearrange. Certainly. Take as much time as you need. I'd like to remind the scores to go to speaker view for the closing arguments, please. May I proceed? You may. She had a dream she was willing to kill for. It's August 25th, 2017 just one week after Don Clark disappeared. And the defendant's conflicted. Is it safe to go to the police now? Has she covered her tracks enough? You heard, Don Clark's body's gone. His phone, his wallet, the syringe that she used on him, all lost to the swamp. She spread the story throughout the park. Don Clark must have gone off to Costa Rica. He's gone now. But was it all enough? Members of the jury, today you heard 
Tara Bassett killed her husband, Don Clark. In order to prove that today, you heard some evidence. You heard from Special Agent Steph Brand. She showed you her motive was clear. She wanted to turn the Elephant Park into a sanctuary. You saw that just before Don Clark disappeared, he signed off on a power of attorney document that would give all of his assets over to Kara Bassett. She realized that was her chance to make her dream become a reality. But getting away with murder isn't like they make it on TV. She made some mistakes. Let's take a look at the evidence you heard in today's case. Let's say you heard about algae. Or, I apologize, say you heard about GPS records. Or records that show that on August 18th, Don Clark's van traveled from uh, the Greater Tallahassee Elephant Park to Big Gum Swamp. Then it traveled back to the airport. Members of the jury, you never heard why Don Clark would take his van to the swamp and then drop the body off. And today, the evidence proves that the defendant, that uh, through Special Agent Branham, you heard how Kara Bassett killed her husband. You heard about carfentanil, a missing syringe containing a lethal dose of chemicals that the defendant had access to. All she had to do was stick her husband with the syringe, load his body into a van, and drive it and dump it somewhere. But she couldn't do it too close to the park. So she went to Big Gum Swamp, 139 miles away, where there are 13,000 acres of alligator infested waters, a place where you would never find a body. Now today, you heard about, you heard about phone records. It came from, from Don Clark's phone and from the defendant's phone. From the defendant's phone, you saw she never reached out to her husband, Don Clark. No, it's been two days. Where are you? No, it's, it's been a week now. I'm starting to get worried. Is everything okay? She never reached out to her husband because she knew he couldn't reach back. Members of the jury, today her motive was clear, her means was clear, and she took the opportunity to make her dream come true. We've proven our case beyond a reasonable doubt. We ask you return a verdict of guilty. Thank you. Pass. Yes, Your Honor, just some time to readjust here. Sure. May I proceed now, Your Honor? You may. Members of the jury, prosecution, they, they told you a nice story today. They told you a story of all of these things that could have potentially happened to Don Clark. They told you a story in which they turned a mother into a murderer and a passion into a motive. However, a wise man once told me, members of the jury, prosecutors don't win off of stories. See, the prosecution ain't held a burden of proof today. They're bound by the law to prove to you the elements of murder. They have to prove, one, that Carabasse killed Don Clark, and two, that she killed him with malice after thought. And you don't prove murder off of a story. Members of the jury, you prove murder off of evidence. And today, there was not enough evidence to prove the murder of Don Clark. Now, since the prosecution told you a story, I want to break down this, this story they told you. Now, we all learned the five W's and how to break down a story. You always have to ask yourself, who, what, when, where, and why when listening to a story. And I told you earlier that if you can't answer one of those five today, the prosecution has left you with reasonable doubt. So let's break down how they couldn't answer all five. The first thing they had to prove to you was where is Don Clark? You heard Stephen, you heard Stephen Branham tell you 
They haven't found on Clark. There's no body. They couldn't conduct an autopsy report in her thorough investigation. They couldn't tell you whether or not Don Clark is in Costa Rica. They couldn't tell you whether or not where Don Clark had left. So they couldn't answer the first of those five questions. Well, then they had to tell you, well, who killed Don Clark? And members of the jury, they couldn't tell you who killed him. Now, they tried to pin this on my client, Kara Bassett, but you heard that Lisa Clark was threatening Don Clark. Only when she threatened him, she said he deserved to die. She was suing him for money. She had every reason to kill Don Clark, but you heard Stephen Branham and her thorough investigation. Well, she didn't look into that either. And then you have to ask yourself, well, what evidence do they have to prove that Carabasset killed Don Clark? And they told you about a tranquilizer. There's no tranquilizer in court today. They told you about a swamp in which they disposed of the body, but there's still no body. I told you about algae, in which was on the bottom of a wheelchair. But members of the jury, if you're going to roll a body into a swamp, wouldn't there be some algae on those wheels? They couldn't tell you when that algae got there, because according to that report, they don't know when it got there. They couldn't find any algae on the clothes, only on the boots. They couldn't tell you whether or not she had on those boots that night. They couldn't establish an alibi. They couldn't establish to any of these things. They told you about how this car fentanyl was deadly. It takes a certain amount to kill a human being, but they overlooked the fact that one of the, uh, one of the things that you will see is vomiting. Like you heard Brandon say in her thorough investigation, there was no vomit in the car. There was no vomit at the swamp. There was no vomit at the park. There was no vomit on the clothes. In fact, they have none of Don Clark's clothes. They have no eyewitnesses, no camera evidence. They have none. That's who, where, and when, and what. Because I can't tell you when Don Clark was killed. And lastly, they tried to tell you why. And they brought forth to you this story of, of a mother who loved these elephants. And they're mistaken this love for a motive. But members of the jury, they have not enough sufficient evidence to even show that this motive, this, 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 this love, is the reason she killed Don Clark. You don't win on stories alone, members of the jury. You have to win on evidence. Sure, as a defense, we can tell you a story, but that's because we don't have the burden of proof in today's case. We don't have to prove to you by the law that she was murdered. Malice, aforethought, deliberately and intentionally, callous and wanton disregard for human life, that's not on the defense. That's on the prosecution. And they failed. They failed to prove the law. Members of the jury, enough is said. There is no evidence to convict my client, which means you have no choice but to find in favor of the defense and hold her not guilty for the murder of her husband, Don Clark. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Members of the jury, the government wants you to believe we're just telling you a story. But the case we brought to you, it's all just a narrative and not based on the evidence. I want you to think back to the evidence you heard today. The GPS records that put Don Clark's van at the Big Gum Swamp the night he disappeared algae that proves that there were samples from both Don Clark's van and a big gum swamp that were highly likely a match. A syringe that the defendant had access to and that went missing shortly before Don Clark disappeared. Think about the who, Carabas, the what, arguments between her and her husband over how the park should be run. The where, at Big Gum Swamp, the when, on August 18th, and the what, to make her dream come true. Don Clark paid for that dream with his life. We ask you return a verdict of guilty. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bailiff, uh, we just submit our ballots now.